Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Now the ring we're making in today's video is actually really interesting so I'm pretty excited to show you guys how it turned out. So it's going to be made of superconductor and I've made rings out of this in the past but I've never made one cut at an angle and the reason for that is because it requires a lot of material and as you might imagine superconductor is pretty expensive and it's also extremely difficult to get a hold of. But recently I found almost five feet of it available for sale so I quickly bought all of it and I'm finally able to make a tilted superconductor ring, so I'm pretty happy about that. Also, because I now have so much superconductor, I'm gonna be doing a huge superconductor ring cell on my website. Um, I've got a link to that in the description, but basically you just use code SUPER50 for 50% 50 off every superconductor ring on my site, and that'll work for the next two weeks. Now, superconductor is always tricky to work with and shape, but other than that, this ring is going to be fairly straightforward. I'm just going to set my metal saw at an angle and then cut off a slice thick enough to make a ring. Here you can see all the superconductor shavings pile up as I'm cutting through it. And let me know in the comments if you got any ideas on what I could do with this. Maybe I could use it in a future ring project because right now it's just an expensive pile of trash. So the next step is going to be to flatten out the angled edges on this belt sander. And this is important because it will allow me to securely hold the piece in the lathe jaws and I'm going to use the lathe for actually shaping the ring. So that's a really important step that I have it securely held in there. Now I'm drilling out the ring blank with a center drill and then I'll finish widening the hole with a boring bar. And I'm just getting it big enough so it'll fit on my ring mandrel. And then I'm going to do the outside diameter and then I'll put it back in the lathe to finish up the inside diameter. And the reason for that is actually a little bit difficult to explain, but basically it just makes the ring a little bit more accurate in terms of its dimensions because ring mandrels are never perfectly, and the lathe jaws themselves actually do a much better job at holding it. So now I've got the ring mounted on a mandrel and I'm just gonna shave it down with a lathe bit until I get it to the final diameter that I want. In this next step, I'm using a Dremel to sand the ring. What I'm trying to do here is get a nice smooth finish on the whole thing and then round the corners slightly so it's more comfortable to wear. Now that I'm finished with the outside, I'm gonna put it back in the lathe and that'll be to finish up the inside. So I'm just using the boring bar again and I'm widening that hole once more until I get to the exact inner diameter that I need. And if you're wondering how I get that diameter, I get the customer's ring size that they send me and then I use the international ring size chart to convert their size into millimeters and then I measure just using my calipers. Next, I repeat the same sanding steps I used on the outside of the ring, except this time I spend a little more time rounding those edges so that it'll have a nice comfort finish and slide onto my finger easier. You can see the Dremel makes these sparks as I'm grinding into the superconductor, and that's just because it contains titanium. Now it's time for acid etching. 
This is a fun step and it's going to totally transform the look of the ring and give it some really interesting depth. So I'm just dropping it in a container of ferric chloride and this will dissolve away some of the copper but it won't affect the actual superconductor itself which is made of a titanium and niobium alloy. And you can see here the results it gives you. So it exposes the superconductor filaments, it kind of makes them stick out a little bit and just overall gives the ring a pretty cool look. Now all that's left to do is throw it into the rock tumbler and I'm going to give it 48 hours and that's going to smooth out all the edges and then give the ring a nice uniform finish. And here the ring is finished. I really love the tilted pattern it has from cutting it at an angle. If you've seen my other superconductor rings, you'll know that this is a completely different look, even though we started from the same exact material. Anyways guys, be sure to let me know what you think in the comments. And if you wanna order a superconductor ring, don't forget about coupon code SUPER50. That'll give you 50% off for the next two weeks. Subscribe if you want, and I will see you on Wednesday, my dudes.